Um, welcome everybody. I'm very happy to um, have you here today in the uh, in our institute um, and especially our Kevin Awardees of the Intercultural Achievement Award. And um, Mr. Liga will start and um, explain a little bit what the award actually is. And um, yeah, then we will continue with the panel discussion. Very good. Uh, let's see that myself. My name is Alexander Liga. I work at the Austrian Foreign Ministry and I'm the head of the task force dialogue with cultures and, and religions. So basically, this is a task force that was established in uh, 2007. And uh, our main business is to promote intercultural and uh, interreligious dialogue. So uh, to, to start off things and then to give you an explanation of what, what we mean with dialogue, I will give you the definition that is being used in, in our task force. So basically, when we talk about dialogue, we mean uh, the interaction between two or more sides uh, with, of course, all the different views. Uh, there's openness mm -hmm. uh, to self-expression, listening to each other without judgment. And the most important element of a dialogue is the transformative potential. So the idea is basically to meet, to exchange, to learn from each other, and hopefully to grow, to promote understanding, and to, to basically develop more tolerance, acceptance for other views and, and other thoughts. So this is the, the main reason why we promote intercultural and interreligious dialogue. And uh, when we talk about dialogue, uh, there are different levels of that. So uh, when we talk about different tracks, so we have track one dialogue, which is basically the dialogue between uh, government officials or on politicians level, uh, states, um, representatives. Then you have the track 1.5, which is a track that we often use in the dialogue, which means that we basically include both state and non-state representatives. So we have a number of uh, individual um, dialogue rounds with uh, countries where we include those representatives uh, from, from different ministries and members of civil society, members of universities, uh, basically trying to, to create a wider understanding. And uh, so the dialogue then not only happens between us and the other country, but it also happens between state and non-state representatives. And while in Austria that is not an unusual occurrence, in other countries, uh, apart from countries, it's not often the case that uh, state representatives would talk with exchange with the views of civil society. So, so basically, it's, it's not only an exchange like that, but also between uh, civil society and uh, the state. Another important point is, of course, that we try to promote um, human rights in general and specifically also freedom of religion and belief. So, that is a very important aspect that in some countries is less optimal, a bit better. But none of us are perfect. Even in Europe, you will find cases uh, where things are not perfect and where then the change but it decides that things need to, to change. Now, uh, in the year 2014, we created the Intercultural Achievement Award. Uh, the idea at the time was basically to identify best practice projects around the world of civil society organizations. So uh, this year, in 2023, we are celebrating the 10th round of the Intercultural Achievement Award. And uh, so first of all, the aim is to identify best practices. The aim is to honor organizations that are doing great work. Um, the motto of the Intercultural Achievement Award is honoring organizations that make a difference. And finally, of course, we are very happy to be able to support the organization to bring the prize award. So over the last 10 years, international projects around the world have received more than 400,000 euros. So it is quite, quite a substantial sum. We are very happy to, to be able to continue this. Uh, the Intercultural Achievement Award is both open to uh, projects around the world, but also to Austrian projects. So there are two Austrian awards, one for integration and one for best Austrian projects. So there are two categories. And we are also very happy every year to have great Austrian projects. Now, uh, to give you a bit of an idea of how the process works, we uh, make the call for applications in January. Uh, the deadline is in the middle of March. Uh, this year, we received uh, over 360 applications. So, in the first step, then the Council of Dialogue and Cultures um, evaluates all the submissions. Uh, we have uh, the four I principles, so at least two people have to go over each application to make sure that uh, we don't miss anything. Out of these 360, then the best 
hundred are then sent to our embassies around the world to check them to basically really visit the organizations to meet with the NGOs. Uh, the purpose is not only to, to see if the work that is being described in the project is actually being done on the ground, but also to connect our embassy with the civil society in different countries and again perhaps enable them on the ground to do joint uh, projects. Based on the reporting of uh, the embassies, then the next stage is that we uh, make a short list. Uh, we usually try to have about five to eight projects per category. Uh, this year, there were so many good projects, we had up to 10 projects per category. And these the short lists and the descriptions and relations of our uh, embassies are then provided to an independent jury. So I moderate the jury, but I have no vote. So we have only representatives of uh, civil society and others who are members of the jury. And then in the meeting, we will discuss the different projects in different categories. And usually there, there is a consensus on the, on the decision. So in the last 10 years, we have never had a disagreement, although the choice is always difficult. I mean, you must imagine that out of the short list, potentially any project could win because they're all that good. So we then decide the winners. And then we also have recognition awards. So projects where we say, they're so good, we need to reward them in some way. So they will get a recognition award, uh, which means uh, they get uh, 3,000 euros um, to, to support their project. And then the next challenge is basically to organize uh, the event in Vienna. Means we have a big prize ceremony that happened yesterday. But the idea is also to, to allow the prize winners from all around the world to connect, to exchange, to have several days together and to learn from each other. And, uh, to give, to give you a few practical examples, uh, our uh, Yura Amina from the Philippines has been talking about her podcast, um, She Talks Peace, and, and I think she has started to convince some of the other members to perhaps start on their own podcast. So, so this is exactly the, the exchange that the networking that, that we are trying to promote. Uh, uh, and from Benin, uh, uh, I was watching the ceremony yesterday, and this project is a storytelling of bringing people together. And people, we, we actually learned a few things of how the we work, worked yesterday, uh, some choreographic details, how to help improve things. Mm -hmm. So, the idea is really best practices. We, we do not need to reinvent the wheel constantly. There are so many great ideas out there. We basically need to work with each other, connect, and we try to do things better. And the whole idea of all of this is basically to do our small share to improve this world, to provide peace, to provide support, to provide understanding, to allow us to hopefully live better and live more peacefully together. So in that sense, uh, I will now step back as a representative of the state and allow civil society to talk, although I will not be completely quiet because I will be helping <laughs> all the from Berlin uh, translating this in French. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Alexander, for your big introduction of the Impossible Achievement Award. Um, my name is Sophie Reifert. Most of you know me already. I'm um, the coordinator of the Anna Lind Network in Austria and also researcher here at the Austrian Institute for International Politics. And um, the Anna Lind Foundation was founded in 2005, for those who don't uh, know the foundation, um, in order to promote civil society and intercultural dialogue. And today it promotes one of the largest networks of um, youth and civil society organizations in the Middle East, in North African and in European countries. And also in uh, Austria, we have a quite vivid um, network of uh, members from many different organizations and associations in the fields of uh, art, culture, migration, education, um, and besides the different networks we have in the different countries. Uh, and the foundation funds some projects like uh, exchanges of artists and students, for instance. So, um, yeah, and just one brief uh, organizational issue: we have an attendance sheet here. So, I'd like to, um, I like, I'd like you, I'd like to ask you to sign it, and uh, you can also indicate there if you'd like to get some more information about the Anna Foundation. Yeah, and welcome also to the OEP. Um, we are an independent research institute. Um, pretty much at the juncture between academic and policy-oriented um, research. And um, yeah, we work in many different fields, such as security politics, democratization, autocratization, migration studies. And um, since we're an association, we're always happy to 
inspire and find uh, new members who like our work and uh, who would like to support us with their membership. Yeah, but let's finally come to the most important people of this morning, um, the seven awardees of the um, Intercultural Achievement Award. And uh, since the winners were kept on the wraps until yesterday night, um, I'd like to start with a brief introduction. And since uh, pictures can say much more than words, as we said in German, I don't know if it's also English um, saying, um, I'd like to show you some brief videos of the different projects. And um, after the introduction part, um, I would like to talk with all of you a bit about your visions, your aims, um, what inspires you for your work, also maybe the difficulties you have um, with your work. And um, of course, we want to come to the question of the panel discussion. Um, what is your potential for change, maybe for freedom in your countries, maybe beyond? Um, yeah, and of course, you in the audience will also have the chance to ask questions. Also, our um, guests who joined in online. I hope everything works and you can see it and hear us properly. So yeah, I'd like to start with Julio Pereira's uh, project, which is called Community Education in Bilingual Intercultural Schools. And yeah, let's have a look what he's doing there. The initiative Ecomod Ecoma Community Education in Bilingual Intercultural Schools, known as Fundershola by the organization Equalita Volante Camino Santiza, is a mobile educational institution that aims to address the educational and developmental needs of children and adolescents in 14 rural areas and indigenous communities throughout Argentina. Specifically targeting those with disabilities, developmental difficulties, and learning disabilities. The project focuses on areas that face various social challenges, such as smuggling, drug trafficking, and human trafficking, particularly in border regions. Furthermore, it promotes healthcare services and assistance with social integration. By bringing education directly to the communities, the mobile nature of the initiative ensures that even those in remote areas can access the resources and support they need. The Tecumboa Ecoma Community Education in Bilingual Intercultural Schools is awarded the Innovation Award due to its comprehensive approach, which aims to create a positive and inclusive learning environment, empowering vulnerable individuals, including Indigenous communities, to overcome challenges and reach their full potential. Yeah, Julio, could you maybe tell us when you started your project and what inspired you to start it? Yeah, when I initially started the story, children, discrimination, disability, and indigenous communities, and it was being on my job. But we travel home with the river and Instead of trying to human and more talent in the achievement and managing more manifestations, very difficult interview with what is for education. But uh, I bring with my mother of the job is public in another context which work with migration and refugee or refugees. 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 And very important in both communities and to manage the ignorant uh, community with uh, migration for sure. In the Spanish, Sahara is the tobacco. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yerba mate, the people translating with children, no go to school, no vaccines, no governments. That is education is fierce. But health and why teaching you what? No pediculosis, no sonosis, is in infirmities, um, or the dog, or the, uh, the snake, or the spiders. Yes, and every time is the what is alert for the state epidemic. Mm -hmm. Dengue, uh, malaria, uh, fiebre, um, yellow, uh, yellow fever. Yeah, it's with uh, okay. 
my world is similar. With children, with disability, and, and indigenous people, they are what I need. Great situations, great to go for the system. In the system uh, format is vaccines, document, medical assistance, but it's no number in the statistics. It's a big, it's a purpose. Yeah. When in the school, in the hospital, document is no victim of the traffic treatment or the organ, uh, organs. Uh, organs. Organs traffic is only is more than 14 villas of the Misiones Argentina in the border, Brazil and Paraguay. While the job is four languages. Portuguese, Guarani, Espanol, and six and language, but no English. Mm -hmm. yeah, the story is very small in the uh, Facebook, Escuelita Mulante Camino de Pisa, and the register document, videos, photos, and uh, um, it's my form of the denuncia, protest, and denuncia is. Uh, the denunciate. Denuncia for reality. The children in these mm -hmm. Well, I'm also happy to uh, share some more information about the different projects with you if you leave me um, the email address here. And um, yeah, maybe you want to connect afterwards with these great people. Um, so yeah, our second guest is Elena uh, from North Macedonia, and um, her project is called School Plastic Free Movement. And um, as the title already, already says, um, yeah, your initiative is, um, or the aim of your initiative is to rid schools from plastic. Um, but let's see what you do with the plastic. Um, yeah, and then. Project School Plastic Free Movement by an NGO Brands of Education is operating in a primary school, Zhuko Rankosk, in Skonia, in North Macedonia. It intends to raise awareness for recycling plastic through the building of new useful instruments and to support its cultural communication with the music lessons. Under the slogan, Collect, Sort, Reuse, Reuse, students and teachers transform everyday items like plastic bottles and packaging into instruments, advancing a deeper understanding of sound and instrument mechanics. With 83 students participating, including those from diverse ethnic and linguistic backgrounds and different grade levels, this project promotes collaboration and cultural education. The project School Plastic Free Movement receives the Sustainability Award for its creative approach to a more sustainable future and for enabling students to build friendships and achieve common goals by bridging language barriers and strengthening intercultural understanding. So, Elena, why um, maybe you could tell us a bit more about your project as well and um, what has um, maybe besides for music instruments as a form of intercultural dialogue. And um, what I'd also like to know is um, how do the children uh, respond to your project? So uh, we decided uh, to transform waste into musical instrument, into music. Our decision was uh, driven by our belief uh, of universal uh, language of music. Um, we saw it as a way to break down the cultural boundaries uh, and provide students uh, from a diverse ethnical and cultural uh, uh, background uh, with a creative platform to uh, communicate, unite and collaborate, uh, uh, addressing uh, uh, a plastic pollution issue in a, in a way to be. Uh, me as a, a math teacher, I don't often uh, um, uh, has the opportunity to uh, share my love of music. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, extra curriculum and project-based learning uh, activities such as this uh, make a great opportunity for me to inspire young minds. Uh, by crafting uh, uh, 
musical instrument, uh, we provide a common ground from students from uh, diverse uh, ethnical uh, background to come together and share meaningful uh, experience. There are uh, differences become their strength, then enrich that uh, this creative journey. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, their response uh, at, at first, uh, they were curious and eager to know uh, more about uh, uh, plastic pollution and uh, uh, the devastating impact that, uh, uh, that has in our planet. Uh, as we uh, provide them with uh, uh, insight of the issue, they uh, began to understand the urgency of the issue and fell to uh, a growing sense of responsibility. So they embraced that uh, uh, idea to cleaning our school from uh, a different types of waste, especially a single-use plastic. Uh, and the most exciting uh, 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 part was we introduced the idea to transform this plastic waste uh, to a musical instrument. Uh, uh, they uh, took up the uh, challenge with the enthusiasm and channeling their creativity to crafting this uh, instrument. So they deduction and excitement were ended when they saw the instrument on the left. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, while Elena's project uses music and, and, and instrument, as we just heard, uh, for intercultural exchange, uh, Zadok, uh, Zadok's project from uh, Benin called Kuvivi, the transformative lyrics, uses storytelling and um, oral tradition for intercultural dialogue. So, yeah, let's have a look at what that means. The project of Kuvivi is based on the lyrics of Initiated by the Rumad SG Learning Organization, harnesses storytelling and the oral tradition to stimulate intercultural dialogue and peace building between Muslim and Latin elders and Christian settled fathers. As deadly conflicts arise from land use and foods in Benin, the initiative seeks to raise awareness of coexistence, reconciliation, and peace among children from the marginalized ethnic groups. Through storytelling, social problems are addressed and relationships between herders and farmers are enhanced. The project Coffee B, the Transformative Lyrics, is granted the Technology Award because of its emphasis on active community involvement and its recognition of the therapeutic role of storytelling in conflict resolution. By combining intergenerational and multicultural learning, the project uses the ancient art of storytelling as a catalyst to tackle complex issues and promote living together in peace. Yeah, so uh, I will ask in English and maybe uh, translate. Yep, yeah. perfect. Um, so I would also like to ask you, what has inspired you for this very project? <laughs> Je passais trois mois pour une formation. Quand je me suis rendu compte qu'on est limité dans le déplacement parce qu'il y avait des conflits entre les éleveurs et les agriculteurs. Uh, so we went to the countryside and we spent three months working on this next project and we realized that he was limited in his movements because there were conflicts between many cheap herders and uh, uh, agriculturists. Et dans le même temps, j'ai commencé par poser des questions sur qu'est-ce qui se passe à l'événement. Et j'ai commencé à poser des questions sur qu'est-ce qui se passe à l'événement. Et là, je me suis rendu compte que les éleveurs et les agriculteurs ont un conflit qui font même que même les enfants des, des éleveurs ne peuvent pas s'amuser avec les enfants des agriculteurs. Les enfants des chrétiens ne peuvent pas s'amuser avec les enfants des musulmans. So we realized that the conflict went uh, that deep that even the children of the sheep herders were not able to play 
uh, with the people uh, at the office. And uh, the children of the Muslim parents were not interacting with Christian children. Alors, je me suis demandé qu'est-ce que je peux faire en tant que la capitaliste contre euh, cela qui est né le projet pour vivre la parole transformatrice qui vise à amener des comptes sur le vivre ensemble auprès de ces populations-là. Puisque j'étais en train de préparer la création pour vivre le monde. Uh, so he was asking himself, what, what can he do as an artist, as an entertainer? And uh, with the storytelling, he could actually engage these children. Et là, j'ai changé la thématique de, de ma création et la forme de diffusion de mon spectacle qui est devenu euh, un spectacle qui est de la foi. Je, je l'amène auprès des villages, dans les villages, dans les écoles où il y a des enfants de ces, de ces peuples-là pour d'abord réviser des, des histoires sur la paix et le vivre ensemble. Ça, c'est la So he changed the way his show works was the theme, and uh, it's also now a moving show. So he goes directly to the villages, to the schools, and starts doing storytelling about peace and how we can peacefully live together. And after that, I select one from these children, and I bring them around my studio to also teach them to tell the stories of peace together. And then he teaches them and engages them in the job. He teaches them how to tell stories of peace. Et au cours de cet atelier, il raconte le problème on les, et on les aide à les transcrire sous forme d'histoire agréable. And in this workshop, the children tell of their problems and they are helped in transcribing, making it into a story. Et puis après, ils vont les raconter que je suis à leur parent. And then they will be telling these stories to their parents. Yeah. yeah, and then to my left, I'm very happy to welcome Amina uh, from the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy. And uh, through her She Talks Peace podcast, um, she has created a platform for women with direct experiences in peace building. And also, okay, we would like to see a video on what is exactly part of the work. The project She Talks Things, initiated by the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, is an impactful podcast that focuses on women, peace, and security, and amplifies the vital contributions of female peace builders in the Philippines and worldwide. Podcasts are a powerful tool for spreading information. She Talks Peace provides a valuable platform for learning and knowledge sharing, allowing listeners of different ages, cultures, and religions to gain insights and perspectives from women with direct experience in peace building. She Talks Peace deserves the media award for creatively utilizing the medium of podcasts to promote insightful conversations, thus shedding light on the challenges women are confronted with and their unwavering commitment to women's rights and the pursuit of lasting peace. Thank you. Um, I think for us, it would also be interesting to learn what we, we talked about yesterday at the lunch, what has inspired you to start it. And um, I would love to hear one experience, a story of a woman who um, was a guest of your podcast that maybe inspired you. And um, yeah. Thank you. Um, first, my organization, the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, When we started, it was right after 9-11, and we needed to show that not all Muslims are terrorists, that uh, Islam at its heart is a religion of peace and moderation. It gave power to women. But today, you don't think about democracy or uh, empowered women when you think about Islam. So since um, since uh, the 2001, we've really been working on empowering and communicating at the village level 
uh, using interfaith dialogue. So we have a very strong relationship with different faiths, Catholic Church, uh, the Buddhist, um, the Methodist, and other Protestant organizations, so that we can work on strengthening um, cooperation and uh, you know, collaboration at the community level, because you cannot have democracy if everybody's fighting. You cannot talk about good government or human rights if the different faiths are fighting each other, like what you see now in Israel and uh, Palestine. But during 9-11 and during COVID, we couldn't work. Two years we are you know, uh, in prison at home because of COVID. So a friend of mine said, why don't you do a podcast? You can continue communicating and you don't have to leave the home. And I said, that's a very nice idea. What is a podcast? <laughs> that's why I'm telling my colleagues here, if I am an idiot in technology and I can do a podcast, they're better in technology. They should be able to do better <laughs> podcasts than me. And when we started doing the podcast, um, we just wanted to invite colleagues from all over, not just the Philippines, to share what they do. Why is it important that women share their experience? And later on, we started getting friends and colleagues who work with the Boko Haram, uh, friends who work on the peace process in Yemen, friends who deal with violent extremists in Lebanon. And when they share with us, they share from the heart. So it's not a lecture, but they're ordinary women who start had to do this because they have no choice. If they don't do this, then their families will suffer. Their children will get caught by the Boko Haram. So they have to do this. And that was really the the inspiration to start the podcast. Mm -hmm. So since uh, 2021, we have had a new podcast, a new episode every week. And I do so hope that you will listen to our podcast, especially the future ones, because we will be interviewing mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. our partners because they are so fascinating as well. Thank you. Really uh, interesting for the guests also to know where they can find this podcast. Oh yeah, um, just Google us. Uh, just type "she talks peace" and it will bring you into our podcast. We're available on Spotify, Google, Apple, and any any platform. Which uh, language? English. Or? It has to be English because um, you know people. This is the interesting thing. When we started, we really had no idea what we were doing. Uh, but we had listeners mostly in the Philippines. As of uh, last month, we have listeners in 100 countries. There's one lonely Russian <laughs> who listened to our podcast according to Spotify. So we have to put it in English. Right. Thank you. So yeah, and I'm also very uh, delighted to welcome here today Alemne um, from the East African country of Ethiopia. Um, and his project also aims to initiate, strengthen and improve interfaith and intercultural dialogue um, with a focus on a very tough um, but important topic, uh, which is uh, female genital mutilation and child marriage. <laughs> The project that leads to dialogue for social and behavioral change to abandon energy and virtual marriage, initiated by Life for Eve, focuses on addressing issues related to female genital mutilation and child marriage in the northeastern part of the Amhara region, as well as neighboring districts of the Afar and Tigray regions in Ethiopia. For the project, a range of strategies are employed, such as engaging diverse groups and collaboration with community organizations, client representatives, elders, solid clubs, religious institutions, and social networks. In addition, print materials and mobile messages disseminate information and encourage participation. 
The project, Community Dialogue for Social and Behavioral Change to Abandon Edging and Child Marriage, deserves the recent events award for fostering open dialogue, promoting understanding, and working on positive change to eradicate NGM and child marriage. Their inclusive approach encourages individuals from different backgrounds to come together, share perspectives, and work towards ending these harmful practices. Yeah, Alene, also you, I'd like to ask you to uh, tell us a bit about your project and maybe also um, ask you what has inspired you to start it. Okay, great. So many years back, um, there was a project initiated by uh, the Population Council and even if they implemented in Amhara region uh, that has tested, successfully tested the full abandonment of um, child marriage through community conversation. So we used, the, based on that evidence, we uh, kind of uh, scaled up. So the community conversation um, is a generic tool that you can use, uh, adapt into different sectors, different issues. Um, when it comes to child marriage and uh, female genital mutilation kind of uh, issues uh, with uh, entrenched social norms. Um, we, in fact, had to do a lot, a lot of strategy in it. Uh, uh, even if Population Council successfully tested that um, Amhara state, Amhara region of Ethiopia state, uh, the number one in the world in terms of child marriage prevalence. Um, the median age uh, been 15 years old by 15 years all girls get married um, and the in terms of fgm the, the upper and the somalia region uh, uh, were also uh, the highest as per the recent dhs so a lot had to be done and we um uh, uh, formed this civil society um, and uh, expanded uh, the community dialogue uh, to address the individual, the uh, group network, the society, the community, and the uh, structures, the other factors beyond the society, like the legislative and uh, uh, enabling environment aspects uh, through a structured dialogue that takes up to six months where we bring representatives of uh, different groups together um, and conduct that dialogue uh, uh, in their own resource. So we are not, I mean, teaching them or instructing them to do this and not to do that. Uh, it, uh, rather, we train the community mobilizers, representatives um, from different uh, two re religions, um, both from the Muslim community in Afar region, Somali region, for example, and the uh, Christian uh, in, in Amara region, uh, since these are the dominant ones. Uh, and uh, yeah, some uh, elders, um, the members of the Youth and the Women Association, um, and we select some of them to on how uh, and train them on how to mobilize the community on how to uh, conduct uh, structured dialogue, um, and the community will meet uh, twice a month to discuss through. Um, uh, I mean, throughout. I mean the the the, the their stay uh, in the in the process. Uh, they will raise different issues, challenge. Um, uh how that that in their own perspective how that practice uh, is beneficial to them right. um and uh, yeah the uh, how harmful these practices are will also be um uh, explained uh, by experts by religious leaders um trained as facilitators and then they reach on a consensus that these practices uh, do not uh, have uh, support from religious side, from culture, uh, across the clanship, for example, FGM in Afar and in Somalia region, uh, and child marriage in Amara region. 
um, and they put a social convention where everyone in the society will be uh, guided by that rule. Um, and uh, uh, if, if if a member uh, in that community goes against that, um, against what the community has agreed to do, uh, not to do, then they will be uh, they will receive some punishment. And if they do, uh, they will receive. I mean, in fact, uh, encouragement is. Um, so that's how uh, it is. Uh, it it evolved and it's going on. Thank you. Yeah, and um, the next project, or the next two projects actually, um, are from Austria. And I would like to start with Kevin Loudon from the project um, Hobby Lobby. And um, with her project, um, or with your project, you enable um, young people from different cultures to broaden their horizons, to do sports together, try new things, and um, yeah, all by volunteer led leisure courses. So. Let's see. Okay. 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 in Austria, there is an artist public program um, that offers free recreational courses to address the children's knowledge and great backgrounds, providing an opportunity for participation and combating poverty. The project combines sports, creativity, science, and foreign language learning, currently Turkish, Spanish, Korean, and English, empowering a significant number of children annually. The low threshold and monthly recurring format allows previously excluded individuals to access recreational education. The Hobby Lobby receives the special award for best Austrian projects for enhancing intercultural competencies through training, fostering intercultural and interreligious dialogue, and for promoting openness and respect among diverse participants through peer to peer learning. Through exposure to different cultures, the young participants develop openness to new experiences and mutual respect. Yeah, so Kathleen, um, would you also tell us what inspired you for um, the project or what inspired the project? And um, maybe also what made you feel that there's a need for this kind of project? Yes, thank you. Um, the project was founded in 2019 by five middle school teachers who, um, and specifically by, by Rosa Bergmann, who realized that um, children actually liked coming back to school from weekends after holidays. And also in the afternoon, they kind of didn't want to leave. And they thought, that's, that's weird. That's not what we know from home, what's going on there. And um, one specific moment with a girl, she's called Azim, um, and she was um, Rosa's pupil, and uh, Rosa sort of had to send her home in the afternoon, and she said, no, she wants to stay, and she's like, don't you have anything better to do? Um, did you want to go home, do a hobby, um, etc.? And that girl kind of responded, no, there is no one at home I can talk to, it's boring at home. And then when uh, Rosa asked, well, don't you have, I don't know, a club you can go to or a hobby you want to, to follow? She said, no, I mean, call back, what do you think? Uh, we cannot afford something like that. And that was really a wake up moment um, for Rosa saying this sort of, it can't be true that it's such a privilege to actually um, have access to extracurricular learning in the afternoons. And basically it angered her so much that she kind of thought there must be a solution to this problem. And that was kind of the birth story of the Hobby Lobby, which offers free of charge extracurricular activities in the afternoons um, and uh, for socioeconomically disadvantaged children in middle school. So the our age bracket is basically 10 to 15. And um, in Austria, there are over 350,000 um, kids and young people under the age of 18 that live in or at risk of poverty. And um, a recent study by the um, Volkshilfe has shown that 103,000 children in Austria um, cannot afford uh, any extracurriculum activities. 
And this is specifically tragic if you think about what well, research has shown that about 70% of our overall knowledge is acquired in informal settings, i.e. outside of school, in your families, but also in clubs like a football club or your dance course and where you interact with peers, with other um, adult um, role models. And yes, so this is really why we do what we do and we want to offer um, every kid the opportunity to try out their interests, um, find out about their full potential. And we very much use the hobby. It's not only about learning the new skill within the hobby, but we use it as a vehicle to also teach the children very important social skills and leadership skills um, that are also so vital in kind of nowadays job and labor market. It's something that really we hope prepares them for what lies ahead and that a lot of these children tell us that they lack or that they feel they lack when they go into sort of further education or the labor market. Yeah. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and last but very not least, I'm very happy to welcome you, Elizabeth, also here uh, in the OEP. Um, and you're from the organization Begegnung Heute Mel, and uh, your project is called Respect. And yeah, let's also have a look at your video. The project Respect from the organization Begegnung Heute in Melk in Austria fosters integration and cultural exchange between locals and immigrants by encouraging participation in various cultural events, which seek to deepen the interaction and understanding between both groups. Additionally, the project provides support and guidance to immigrants in navigating administrative processes, such as dealing with authorities, accompanying them during doctor visits, and assisting with job applications. The project Respect is awarded the Special Award for Integration for its promotion of discussions on values, religions, and customs, thus encouraging dialogue and mutual respect. By facilitating these activities, the project strives to create a harmonious and inclusive community where diverse cultures can coexist and thrive. Yeah, and Elizabeth, would you also like to tell us a bit more about your project? Well, how it started. It was a very <laughs> funny way for me because I also came to Milk in 2015. I changed my dress from Brunnen to Birgit Square near Vienna uh, to Melk. And with me, uh, there are Kanga refugees. So we came both. And in this, I got to learn most famous people in Melk. They are helpful people. And so I started with them. Uh, I had finished my work, so I had time enough. I had been a social worker and I helped the refugees, especially in guiding them to. I don't know how to tell uh, to to the doctor, to the hospital, especially then when Corona came, it was very difficult for them. And there also have difficulties in um, filling out these formulas we had, so I helped them to write the things. Well, it was I would say this was a very fun time, and we went on, and then we saw what was was lacking. That was help for the children in the beginning at school, but it still goes on because some have, uh, yeah, they, they still have problems with German. And I think more with the language German, but not with the other subjects. So they're very good in mathematics, but then other things, so they are good, intelligent, and we helped to give them the, the what, whatever field things. And the next was I got a little shop from um, as a man who who, um, who had uh, several shops in in Melk. He gave one to me to a very cheap price, and there we did we got uh, sewing machines, and we invited the. The women, especially the women, to work with us and also talk with us so they can use the language. They go to courses, of course, but then stay at home and mm. forget it. So we can use it every day. And the second thing was the 
the people met and came inside because they wanted to repair something, to buy something. So, yeah. And so as the conversation started yeah. with all the older people, and that was a very good start. And so we went on in this way, and now it's our project. We would uh, like so much a coffee, like it's in Vienna, the Sprachcafé. Mm -hmm. And I think that would also be a very good thing because the pupils from our Stift, from our monastery gymnasium, they would help us with talking to the others, and so we, we could change events. Thank you very much. And since all of our guests come from so many different countries, I would also like to um, get to know a bit more about the circumstances you have in the countries and maybe also the difficulties that you face with your project. Um, would you set up maybe you'd like to start? So the idea that we did is far away from town, so the economic opportunity there are limited. Uh, same with extracurricular activities, there is almost nothing for children. So the first challenge was to provide the children with extracurricular activities that were more than the workers here. La, la difficulté liée à la possibilité de rencontrer des communications entre les peuples et les, et les urbains qui s'ajoutent à ça. And then there was the challenge of uh, the difficulty bringing the two different uh, sides, let's say, together. Mais pour faire face à, à ces difficultés, il faut, il faut soi-même être en mesure de relever d'autres difficultés qui est. Question to you, Alenne. Um, maybe also is uh, Ethiopia supporting you, or the state of uh, Ethiopia supporting you somehow with your projects? And uh, yeah, also the same question what difficulties do you face? So, one of the difficulties um, in the current circumstances in the country first, uh, when the project was started, um, there was a war in the uh, Tigrayan region and then Damhara region. So it is uh, completely now um, yeah, difficult for us to operate uh, in, in these areas. Um, and we work for women and girls and women and girls and children are the, uh, the number one to suffer um, when there are no peace around. Um, yeah, and they, they I've heard a lot, a lot of things happened uh, again at them. This is one of the most challenging ones. Uh, in terms of, I mean, the specific challenges in, in the project's nature, uh, bringing the community at the beginning, bringing community from different uh, generations impact. There are uh, elders, there are young people, there are uh, people from different religions and culture uh, is a little bit challenging uh, and there are resistance uh, 
because these practices are I mean active for generations um, and uh, yeah people say these kind of initiatives are against our culture against our belief mm. uh, but later they will be uh, the ones who uh, prepared the most to to for, for for these activities for this initiative to sustain uh, they like the discussion in between uh, well yeah in the presence of religious leaders cultural uh, traditional leaders uh, in the presence of parents uh, and the grandparents and also in-laws uh, because uh, these are the ones that approve uh, that put pressure on parents to marry uh, girls of yeah so the uh, yeah there is um, a challenge at the beginning uh, to to initiate uh, to start a dialogue a room for for dialogue for conversation honest and uh, yeah active conversation may not be uh, easy at the beginning but later uh, gradually trust uh, gets developed and people start to question what they have been doing for so many years uh, and other perspectives be uh, uh, considered. Okay. Yeah, and Julio, we were also yesterday talking about the difficult situation you faced in Argentina and um, you told us that um, for doing it, you're doing it completely for free, right? Um, you work in, as a teacher, and for that, you're working one week um, in a formal job. And it just already shows how precarious it can be. Um, but maybe, yeah, you also want to tell us a bit more about the problems you face. The problem, each problem is a necessity for the translator for writing alternative communication for when they sing and text in the grammar. Problem is uh, the children go to farm and no farm, how? They have move, not only people, they have move. And every time it, when full when it's one, one hour, because later, yes, it's the problem, the difficulty while stop is to move with communities. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and another problem is the border. Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, different level. Yes, different uh, public policy, mm -hmm. different, but uh, when in Argentina of the marriage with uh, children and years and Adult is mm -hmm. illegal, but the warning of the, the community, no. Mm -hmm. But uh, the integral sexual education and the uh, different uh, rights of the reproductive sexual with love, with the uh, abortion, uh, different with uh, anti reproductive system, <laughs> different is we are in problem with the articulation. But another problem is uh, in education with it's true problem. But in um, children, dyslexia, autism, uh, language pattern with no speak nothing like that. For to New York is a mezcla. Mezcla? Mixture of the Portuguese, Guarani, Espanol, no is a very difficult. Uh, uh, in the audiovisual, <laughs> very that is, And you speak all of these languages? Yes, it's a uh, really <laughs> principal for another is uh, no help for the children and it's about mm -hmm. no cheer um, special, no, no pharmacology. It, it is a problem, but uh, um, the third problem is sensitive. <laughs> The reality of the state is no issue. There's a traffic human, mortal infant, children, and war children, and it's not possible you uh, uh, 
Photographer videos no. No is the amenaza. Threats is every time. Yes, under photography. And the state, the government, the property and Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, but let's also come back to the good experiences you're doing in your job and not only talk about the difficult situations. Um, Elena, would you like to share one experience where you felt like are we really actually changing something or I feel like they get really inspired and yeah, something's moving? Uh, I'm in Michelle, a project idea, EP idea was to inspire, uh, um, desire to inspire uh, to create in Kishi simultaneously uh, the environmental uh, plastic pollution uh, and the need to promote intercultural uh, understanding and unity. Uh, through the process of uh, building design campaign uh, instrument, our uh, students uh, and teach in collaborative uh, teamwork, uh, uh, problem solving, solving and uh, transformative impact they can use in the community, but in the uh, whole world. Uh, why not? Uh, because uh, all while pressing, uh, um, addressing uh, a plastic pollution issue. Uh, uh, through this uh, activity. Plastic pollution is not uh, just our uh, problem, it uh, uh, has become a global crisis affecting uh, wildlife, uh, uh, ecosystem, and uh, human health. Uh, we recognize the, uh, we felt compelled to uh, take reaction, not just for ourselves, but the future generation too. Moreover, uh, we recognize the significance of uh, addressing this issue in inter the intercultural framework. Uh, so, uh, through this uh, activity, uh, students not uh, just become uh, environmentally uh, conscious, uh, but uh, uh, they uh, be. Uh, become uh, uh, full of uh, uh, self-confidence that uh, can, uh, 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 their influence can impact to the community and the outside of school. Yeah, yes. I'd like to ask you the same question. You've been talking to so many different people. When was the moment when you thought, okay, I changed something with these dialogues I have with people, and or they change something with their work, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one particular uh, message that I got um, in my country, our government uh, is trying to get teachers in the Department of Education, uh, universities to start incorporating peace education when they teach. But they don't have much materials mm -hmm. about peace education, women peace security. So I got several uh, text messages from a professor uh, who teaches in the South. And she would tell me her uh, impression of every episode. And we have since 2021 every week. So it's more than a hundred episodes already. And the last episode last time that was last month, she said, I have completed all the episodes. And thank you, because now she has materials hmm. to share with her students. And that made her so very happy because this is free. Anybody can use it, share it. And start talking about you know uh, what Hamsatu is doing with the Boko Haram, what Antelak is doing to talk about uh, Islam and feminism. Mm -hmm. Because there are feminists who are Muslim, or Sister Mary John uh, talking about who is Mary 
because I love that episode about Mary. I had a Muslim scholar and Sister Mary John uh, Manezan, a very uh, well-respected nun, Catholic nun. They're talking about who is the Virgin Mary because those of us, uh, you know, modern day, when you think about the Virgin Mary, you always think about this lady in white and blue, very peaceful, very patient, very, very nice. And then Sister Mary John and uh, our Islamic scholar talked about Mary the rebel. And I said, what? <laughs> Mary the rebel? And then they told this, the real story. I mean, you know this, but nobody paid attention to it. Imagine a 14 year old girl having a child not with her husband and telling the community, I am doing this because I believe in God and this is my choice. I will do this. And she could have been stoned to death. Mm. And her husband saying, Yes, this is weird. If that happens today, what do you think? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, but that's Joseph, much older. <laughs> so, uh, but in those days, the um, uh, the mortality is much lower. I mean, if you if you reach the age of forty, you're an old person. If you reach my age, you're dead already. So I'm sixty nine. So. When we have episodes, so, today. <laughs> <laughs> so when we have episodes like that and people comment, it's really so encouraging. So we are trying to get schools and teachers to use our podcast mm -hmm. to, to share it. But um the, the challenge really is the fact that um, we need to get we really need to get the funds to produce it better because they want video. And video is not mm, difficult. Not on the audio? No. Because you have to uh, do infographics and, you know, so that it's not boring and teachers can use it in, in classroom. But so far, we're, we're very happy with the, with the encouraging messages that we're getting from our listeners. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you very much. And yeah, looking at the time, I would like to open the stage for your questions. Um, also, our participants on Zoom, um, if they have done so. No, not so bad. Think of questions and um, also you here in the Zoom. Um, are there any questions you would like to ask to our seven awardees? I would like to ask who uh, um, paid for this project, spread financial government or yourself for each project maybe this is very important I have also an organization so small I paid for my project by myself this is what I think stay as a in, in our way to do more to help people more I don't know in which country for you if there is any support from government, from, I don't know, maybe if you understand me. Just look around, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, our project, uh, our project uh, is not free from anybody. Uh, I have opportunity to uh, work in the school and also be part of the NGO. So uh, my practice work, uh, I work in the school and extracurricular activities uh, are free. Uh, so uh, um, this project, uh, School Plastic Free, uh, we uh, found uh, garbage in our neighborhood. So nobody is It's a free of charge. So the creativity and uh, Free will to uh, help and uh, uh, be part of the society uh, as guide us to the process. Nobody pays. Like, you have a time for it. Yeah. It's different for a moment, not so. In your Facebook and Instagram. And... Please, uh, one 
children with the sheer statement. Please win. Yeah. Okay, here uh, I'm repairing and reciclado and you one part, you one part mm -hmm. and uh, the, the books, delivery, uh, ah, all books, come on, let's go, let's go. Uh, it's no noise problem, but uh, transparency for the social work is more. It's very important for solidarity. solidarity. Mm -hmm. It's the same year, and in turn, yes, one dollar, no. Mm -hmm. Here's a one um, the uh, pharmacologia, your uh, pencil, the people every time um, another more is the people. What is, what is the children? I am padrino. I am your father. Finance your tratamiento. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Your uh, hospital. Uh, cuenta. Okay. Mm -hmm. sí. No, no for loans. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Incredible. But no uh, using of the poor or anesthetic in the tent or uh, life, uh, no, no money. No. Uh, honey, you have a children. You need money, money for children, and money cash, no. But cash for him, uh, the father, we are gold and uh, drugs, no, no. For the hospital, for the, uh, uh, the household. Uh, <clears throat> or material clinical food in the arts and never one more. Yeah. If you can do that all the time. Only one problem one problem is the uh, oil gasoil. The dot line why do I'm going for my board yeah. first. There is no no sponsor to like Schools and university or businessmen, they don't have. But in when two occasions each year for the school and the water total of the perforation, mm -hmm. I'm project to the social and principal responsibility for the project. With uh, I need the village one of all this the project in a way okay. Mm. But we have one, two, three of them, but no, mm. no, it's it inversal, contrary of the different, the status of the private, is your health, or Camino de Tiza, your health. Mm. Yeah. The same, the same with us, uh, we support uh, the podcast uh, government okay but uh, if government will use our podcast that's fine we will not ask them to pay because it's more important that teachers use it very difficult to get government to support civil society I think same for mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, no, please go. Uh, in our case, we received small grants from foundations, international organizations working on these issues, the FGM and child marriage. Um, we also received in kind uh, contribution, in kind donations from others like computers and other uh, uh, materials that we use. Um, there are volunteers. Pro professionals working in previous projects, um, they facilitate they support uh, facilitated uh, training of trainers for the community mobilizers several times, uh, and uh, we used our own resource for that. Um, development of these structured community dialogue guidelines adapted to child marriage, adapted to FGM, adapted to Amhar. The northern Amar region and adapted to Afari and Somali, so different versions. So we did this uh, using our own uh, people uh, who are part of the uh, the group, the civil society. Uh, yeah, we developed a long term um, strategic plan. Um, this year, at the beginning of this year, 
uh, we developed the uh, resource mobilization strategy and these were uh, developed by our professionals. So a great deal of, uh, uh, yeah, resources um, uh, internally uh, from volunteers, but also financial support to run the, the project activities on the ground, uh, responding to the call for uh, applications uh, from um, uh, foundations specifically designated to single project. So there are three, four piece of projects um, on, on the same context, uh, community dialogue for the abandonment of child marriage in certain areas are being sponsored. It's first supported by the organization of artists in my life. So the artists committed uh, as part of the engagements that they have to reserve a certain amount and a certain time also to do these special activities. Because in, in Benin, basically, uh, there will not be any payment for something that doesn't exist yet. So first it has to exist, it has to happen, and then... They give me money to make that uh, this uh, festival or the uh, event, and in this way, they force me to go to the break to go to the to to uh, six track or the to, to remind us that please, I want to work with you to to make something for people. I think apart from this uh, stories, is belong to us. We should we should work. 
more. Sure. Go to the businessmen, go to the companies. Go to, they uh, all the time they think the doors. I I know that it's very difficult. I I mean, mm -hmm. Chibwe, yeah. Your I need help for start my project. Yeah. Or you start your project, and the, another way your project is to pay or call pay a team help. Yeah. 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 Now, after this price, you have more chance to go to the official offices and say, ah, I have a price, I did a project, mm -hmm. I can make the it. price here yeah. yeah. and the money yeah. from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, for the, the, the price of the author, in Argentina, five books already. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. This is even mm -hmm. not the benefit from the price, not just for money, but just to let the, the uh, uh, official uh, um, uh, offices uh, um, to throw, uh, the link trust. To trust us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe I can offer also an Austrian uh, sort of view, and we have now grown into a team of 16, so we do have to get to funds and what helped us in the beginning. So I think in the beginning, we were very much funded by prices such like this, but there are a number of prices you can kind of apply to and that help. And we've also engaged in a couple of sort of incubator programs for very young organizations or projects that only get started, where you get both a lot of knowledge and helping you how to, you know, uh, like develop your project, but then you are able at the end also to win some prize money. For instance, the SEER comes to mind for me, so that's a social impact award. So there are a couple of awards like this in Austria. So that has helped us a lot at the beginning. And it's only now that we are becoming um, bigger and that we have also not only sites in Vienna, but also beyond Vienna, that we can um, apply to the ministries, the different yeah. ministries, and we get now more and more state funding. So we we are definitely also funded by the state and also by private foundations. Mm -hmm. It's a big mix. And I think for us, it's definitely, it sometimes feels like it's two things in one. Not only do we actually have to do what we do with the project, which is the main thing, but besides that, it's, an, it's a whole other operation to actually find the money that affords us to do what we do because we, we don't charge our beneficiaries anything. So it's always the two that go hand in hand. But it is, um, yeah, it was possible for us to grow in that way um, yeah, in, in, in Austria. Right, but still also uh, there is not so much information. And maybe this was my mistake mm -hmm. because I didn't ask or serve so much to, to have a fun. Last year, I, I did a um, theater uh, uh, play in the Opera House in Cairo. Mm -hmm. Who did this theater play is uh, um, poor children from the Seda Zeyna, the city in Cairo, with a, 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 a disabled uh, handicap finger and the refugees. Uh, what, 50, uh, 50 children? did this uh, theater to mm -hmm. the opera. Mm -hmm. and I, I think this changed their life because they, they were known in the They opera. were seen. Yeah, yeah. because and, uh, I, 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 I paid for, for my money for this project, but the parents for the, the children have, um, help us a lot. Mm -hmm. They bring everything what they need. We, we, we make the costume together. We, mm -hmm. I think yeah, this is apart from uh, the, 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 the this researching not not so much mm. just to one award mm. even yeah. Yeah, maybe if I want to search for or resource I can find mm. here especially in I, Austria there's many uh, I would uh, encourage you to search because there's definitely ways yeah. so you don't have to fund it yeah. all and also um there are quite a few things especially if you work internationally that would open up different possibilities as well that for instance we don't have because as you say the collaboration collaboration is very often also and also eu is kind of going into that direction <laughs> Yeah. 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 I'm happy I meet you and I, I learned so much from your uh, uh, experience and really for next year maybe our next project that will be easier. I but think. for a moment, oh my God.
No, no, yes. <laughs> yes. I have still a question for the early married uh, for both of you because this issue or the, this problem is a, a, a get together with religion. Yes. Mm. Did you have a problem to 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 talk about this? Mm. What is this issue? Because it's taboo to my child. Yeah. Uh, sometimes now uh, this is what the religion said and mm. nothing to do with it. Yeah. Well, um, we have been working on on that issue in our Muslim communities in the Philippines for a while now. Um, Good thing is uh, my government passed a law uh, increasing the age of marriage to 18. Our many Muslim religious leaders said, no, that is not Islam. But what we did, my organization, is we got in touch with our partners from Al-Azhar, from uh, Islamic University in other countries, Indonesia, Malaysia. We talked to Islamic scholars and they all shared with us information coming from Islamic religious leaders, including Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia gave um, like a uh, circular for the Sharia councils that the marriage age is 18. Al Azhar did the same. So we put all of this together and started discussing mm -hmm. with the religious leaders. And in the podcast, we also talked about it so that we could share the information mm -hmm. with a bigger, with a bigger community. But you know, there, mm -hmm. there are still very um, extreme yeah. uh, fundamentalist religious leaders who say no, it's an Islamic, even though Al Azhar already said. No, you cannot have children marry. The age has to be, you know, uh, eighteen. Mm -hmm. So we push, we push that. We push for that minimum age eighteen. And then no. actually, yeah. So in some part, it's religion, especially in our area, which is uh, the most important uh -huh. dilemma, the most challenging one. Uh, after a series of um, workshops, discussions, um, the religious uh, leaders, the scholars from the religion uh, have accepted that uh, marrying of, I mean, children is unacceptable and they justify it from various uh, uh, scriptures point of view. And uh, it's not really uh, the religions that perpetuate this. Uh, in other parties, um, there are different, different, I mean, cultures, for example, in Afar, uh, whom to you marry is restricted. It's, uh, it's not wide open for your choice. You can only marry, uh, a boy marry, um, it's called Abzusoma marriage. Uh, his cousin from his mom's side. Mm. So in Afar, it's limited. So it depends on the availability of cousins in his uh, mom's side. Uh, so if you grow up older, um, yeah, the culture uh, insists him to take up what is available, the, the, uh, the older cousin anyways. So he may be at uh, the mid twenties, and the girl could be early uh, teens, and uh, that is that's the most decisive part. It's not religion that puts a pressure; it's culture. So, and sometimes they play together. One justifies the other. Uh, in that case, both the religious leaders and the, the traditional leaders, the clan leaders, come together to discuss. Uh, and uh, to set a standard for for today's world, uh, even if it happened in the past, then that could be a mistake unless it go against our uh, religious principles, then we can uh, 
uh, I mean, come up with a solution uh, to, to abandon these practices and move forward. So it wasn't that challenging if we really engage with the most influential ones. But uh, you need, uh, you, you, yeah, the, the local religious leaders may um, go against, may disapprove it, but the, the higher needs to accept it. Um, recognition from the higher, so downwards to the religious leaders at the lower level and to the culture, at, uh, 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 yeah, also. So there are laws, but the people are not, I mean, when it is justified in that way, when they are uh, said, unless you do this, uh, law will punish you, they will have mechanisms to go, to undertake this, undergo this um, um, in a hidden way. Uh, so these dialogues are um, uh, rather being uh, the most successful ways. Uh, because after that, yeah, all are disapproving. And if people want us to be in a positive deviant side, uh, if a parent, for example, uh, do not want to accept child marriage, uh, there will not be pressure from religious leaders, religious com community, uh, the traditional leaders, the traditional community, uh, the other networks. So he will not be or should not be isolated. Um, the 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 dialogue will be uh, a force uh, a, for, for them to uh, stay. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, practicing what is what is recommended. Yeah, and the, the, the people there, the level of education they, they can read and write. Yeah, that is an important question. So literacy is the lowest again in the areas that we work on. So that case, there are uh, community mobilizers, uh, facilitators who are able to read and write, uh, and the participants may not be uh, able to read and write. That case, we use uh, um, illustrations um, and this verbal uh, kind of communication. Uh, can still be uh, important. So for the community dialogue, uh, literacy would be an added value, but uh, not a decisive one. It, it didn't, I mean, it didn't uh, make a huge, a huge negative impact on, on our work because this conversation still uh, can go on and we use illustra illustrations uh, uh, through charters, um, papers, and pictures. Um, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for your question. Um, yeah, and thank you all of you so much for presenting here your very exciting uh, projects. And um, yeah, I'd like to um, invite you for uh, the for more informal part of this morning. And uh, we have to be in the other room. And um, yeah. Like to invite you to exchange a bit more if you have more questions and just be free to ask our uh, guests. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.
Selling the apple. Yeah. 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 Yeah.